Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, continuing with the series that I'm making on how to make dividing head plates. I've already made several here, and I hope you've watched the other videos. Let me show you what the videos are so far, up to this point. Alright, here's the titles and the numbers of the videos up to this point. And I'm on the fifth one, which is number 624, Making Dividing Head Plates by the Digital Readout Method, perhaps better titled by the Coordinate System or Cartesian Coordinate System. And this is probably the system used by CNC machines, but we're going to do it manually. You are required to have a digital readout for this, but of course you could do it with dials, but it would be most difficult and subject to error. And even the method I'm going to show you is very, very subject to human error. Now I'm sure everyone has done this in school, so we just have four quadrants here. This could be a graph or whatever you want to call it. I'm not a mathematician, but if a circle described such as that various points on the circle can be found or described mathematically in quadrant one they're going to be plus plus and quadrant B it'll be minus X plus Y and so on around there the signs are very very important well how are we going to find these points in any edition of the Machinery Handbook, you're going to find pages and pages of tables. Let me zoom in and show you what table I'm using. This is table 3, and we're just laying out whole circles, is all we're doing. And we have all of these numbers here, and I'm interested in 15 holes, so I have enlarged the 15 holes, wherever it is, right here that in just a second but these charts only go up to I believe 28 holes after that you're on your own or maybe there's other charts that can be found on the internet or this can be done mathematically but again why would you want to do the math I, I wouldn't even know how to do it offhand but I'm going off of these tables to find those points all right my wife typed up for me everything that was in that column that you saw and by the way, there was an error there, a sign error. And I really struggled with that because they misprinted something many years ago. <laughs> I always wondered how accurate those charts were. But there we are. Uh, there's coordinates uh, for uh, the first hole, X1 and Y1. But they must be uh, multiplied by the diameter of the holes circle. And this whole circle is 2.862. So this is the only plate that came again with the master brand lathe dividing head. So in the previous video I did this plate. I'm going to do this exact plate again only by that coordinate method. I'm only doing the one whole circle. And after you see how laborious and tedious this is, you know why I'm not going to make all of these holes. I'm not going to make a hundred holes because it's going to take me over an hour just to find and locate 15 holes. But the diameter of the whole circles here, you recall from a previous video I had measured and uh, uh, there is the radius of each circle, so the 15 hole circle is 1.431, and I have to double that to 2.862 for the diameter of that hole circle for 15 holes. It's very hard to follow this in this format, so I had my wife retype this for me, and there are the coordinates for each of the 15 holes with X and Y. Notice that there are positives and minuses. Everything's a positive unless there's a negative sign next to it. I know that this is just clear as mud for some of you, but you can skip all of this because we're going to go over the milling machine in a minute and locate these points and drill them. But let me show you the setup on the milling machine for this. So let's go on over to the bridge port. 
Okay, how are we going to hold this plate? Well, my vices do not open wide enough, so I can't use a vise. I don't want to put it directly on the table with clamps like this, because if you were doing a plate that had a lot of holes in it like this, although I'm not, I'm just doing the inner circle, the toe clamp would interfere. So, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to use a, a chuck. It could be a three-jaw chuck or a four-jaw chuck. Let's see how I will do that. I'm going to use this four-jaw chuck. I don't have a three-jaw chuck with reverse jaws on it at the moment anyway. Now, this boss here sticks up too high, so you can see that if I were to clamp it here, I would run into that rocking problem. So I'm putting parallels underneath the sides. Okay, here's the setup. By the way, on these riser blocks here, watch for a future video where I make a set of these. These are pretty handy, adjustable to any height within its range. Now I'm going to tighten that down presently and it could matter less if it is centered in the chuck because we're going to recenter it by this hole as we did in other videos. But if you are going to uh, drill a, a plate with a lot of holes, you, you don't want to drill through and into the chuck jaws or strike the hardened chuck jaws. So lay some little scraps of wood in there. These are just tongue depressors. I'm not going to do that because I'm not really working in that area. And since these are quarter inch thick rather than the 3 sixteenths, I'm not going to be drilling all the way through. But it's very real possibility that that would be a problem for you. And I will tighten the chuck jaws. It's ready to go. It can't move. And I put these lines on there just so that you could... <laughs> So I could illustrate the quadrants, probably not necessary. As I said a few minutes ago, it doesn't matter what the position of the chuck is on the milling machine table, nor how well you have centered the, the plate in the chuck. Because we're going to now center in the manner that we did in another video. So use your favorite method, whether it be a coaxial indicator or a dial indicator. But I'm going the simple, easy route. Do you remember me using this semi-accurate method one other time? So I've loosened up the two clamps again. And now I can float the chuck around, bring this plug that I made, and now tighten the clamps. And now that the center of the spindle is aligned with the center of the plate, it is very important that we zero the digital readout. And that's our starting point. I'm ready to drill. So for the first hole I will move the milling machine table in the X position of zero. I won't change that and I'll move a Y positive 1.431. Even as I do this, uh, in an upcoming video, my buddy Ted, and that's on uh, Confusion 360 there, is doing uh, a 3D print for us. So that'll be a later video. I'm ready to drill and I'm just using a center drill and I'm pilot drilling all of these. I'm going to finish them on the drill press as I have been doing in the other videos. So I do not have a tool change. This is the location of hole 2. Hole 3. This is hole 6. Notice that we're into the negative now on the Y.
Okay, that was hole 14. Let me zero in now for the final hole. Notice how slowly and deliberately I am doing that and how I am double checking it each time to make sure that I am not in error because the plate is ruined if I miss drill. Minus 581. Looks pretty good. And of course a CNC machine could have done that entire circle in what two minutes or less. Probably even changing tools. So we had the final size which should be one eighth. Well that completes it. That's all I'm going to do, you can imagine how much time it would take to do a full plate and how much margin for error there is. I'm going to take it out now. There it is. It looks good. It looks symmetrical. If there's one hole that's off, it probably would really, really show up, even just to the naked eye. Now I would take these over and drill them one inch, one eighth all the way through. But of course it's a sample plate, so I don't believe I'm going to do it. I'm sick of drilling holes. Well, there's the coordinates, and there is the finished plate. And it sure turned out nice, thank goodness. Now you need to say a little prayer while you're doing that too, because accuracy is what it's all about. And it's an awful lot of work to start over. Now, if this were a usable plate, of course I'd still have to drill these three mounting holes. I'm not going to do that. But that pretty much completes this video on how to lay out and drill holes for a dividing plate by the Cartesian coordinate system. And, you know, in this handbook here, I, I might have mentioned it before, but that was really set up for jig boring. And some of you maybe do not know what jig boring is or was, but it was just a, an accurate, extremely accurate way of laying out and drilling or boring holes on uh, dies and so on. And that was long before CNC machines. It was all done with dial indicators and rods and so on. It's just uh, probably a lost art. I don't know if it's done anymore at all, but I think Moog was the big company that made those uh, jig borers. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, there will be at least one or two more follow-up videos in this series, so watch for it. This is Tobu Kane saying so long for now. Thanks for watching.